Hi everyone, myself Yogan Jalal and I'm back with some more radical hacking interview questions that you might encounter. The very first question the interviewer can ask is what does the term defense in the mean? Defense in DAO, it is also known as your layered security. It is a cyber security strategy that involves the implementation of multiple security measures, each acting as a barrier to deter or mitigate the potential threats. The core concept is to avoid relying solely on a single line of defense as any single security measure could be bypassed or compromised. Instead, by layering multiple security controls, an organization can create a more robust and resilient security posture. The layers of defense it includes like using parameter security, right? The first line of defense is established at the network parameter where we can use your firewalls, intrusion prevention system and other boundary devices to monitor and filter the incoming and the outgoing network track and they will be helping us to prevent unauthorized access and block known malicious sources. Then we are having your access control. We can also use the access control mechanism, right? The access control mechanisms are employed to manage user privileges and permission within the organization network. This includes strong authentication methods such as your multi-factor authentication, which ensures that only the authorized user can access critical resources. Then we can also use your endpoint securities. The endpoints such as laptop, desktop and mobile devices, they are often targeted by the attacker. So, the endpoint security solutions are deployed to protect against malware and unauthorized access such as your antivirus software, endpoint detection and response system and device encryptions. We can also apply your network segmentation. Dividing the network into smaller segments or zones which will be helping to contain potential breaches and limit lateral movement for attackers. Like if one segment is compromised, the rest of the network will be remaining protected. Along with that, we can also use your encryption. The encryption ensures that the sensitive data remains unreadable even if it is intercepted by the unauthorized individuals and it is crucial for the securing data at rest and in transit. Then your security monitoring. Continuous monitoring of the network and the system is essential to detect suspicious activities and potential security breaches promptly. The SIM solutions, they will be playing a vital role in centralizing and analyzing the security loops. Along with that, we can also apply the incident response and the plan. Despite having robust security measures, the breaches may still occur. The organization, they need to have a well-defined incident response plan in place to quickly respond and effectively to security incident. In conclusion, the defense in depth stand as a cornerstone strategy for the organizations who are seeking to protect their valuable assets. By clearing the multiple security measures, the organization they can build a resilient defense posture that addresses various attack vectors and enhance their ability to respond effectively to cyber threat. Embracing defense in depth as a fundamental principle enables the organization to bolster their cyber security efforts and safeguard their critical information in the face of our evolving cyber challenges. Then the second question the interviewer can ask is like what exactly does network traffic monitoring and analysis involve? The network traffic monitoring and analysis involve the careful observation and examination of data packets which are moving across the network. The data packets are the fundamental units of information that carry messages, files and commands between the devices connected to the network. This process allows the administrator to understand the nature of traffic, to detect the anomalies, to optimize the performance and to ensure the network security. 
So the network traffic monitoring and analysis, they will be serving as the indispensable tools for the network administrators and the security professionals. And it will be offering a deeper understanding of the network operations, security threats, and the overall performance. By capturing and inspecting the data packets, the organization, they can gain the ability to optimize the network resources, to detect the anomalies, and to ensure a secure digital environment. With the ever-increasing reliance on the computer networks, investing in robust traffic monitoring and the analysis tool, it is very crucial for maintaining the smooth functioning and the security of the modern networks. Then we are having the next question like what is the difference between your RPO and RTO? Your RPO stands for your recovery point objective. RPO refers to the maximum acceptable data loss that an organization is willing to tolerate during a disruptive event such as system failure, cyber attack or natural disaster. In simple terms, the RPO defines the point in time to which data must be restored and after the recovery process it is initiated. It represents the time gap between the last successfully backed up data and the moment of failure or disruption. For instance, if an organization sets an RPO of 1 hour, it means that they are willing to accept a data loss of up to 1 hour's worth of transaction or changes. In this case, if a system failure occurs, let's say at 3 pm, the data will be recovered to the most recent backup taken before 2 pm, assuming the backup is completed every hour. Then we are having your RTO. Your RTO stands for your recovery time objective. So, on the other hand, your RTO defines the maximum tolerable duration within which a business process or an application must be restored after a disaster or disruption occurs. It represents the time taken to recover the system, resume the operation and restore services to normal functionality. For example, like if an organization sets an RTO of 4 hours for a critical business application, it means that they accept the application to be up and running within 4 hours of a disaster. The goal is to minimize the downtime and ensures the business continuity by quickly resuming the essential operation. The key difference between them, the RPO focuses on data loss and determines how much data can be lost during a disaster recovery process. And your RTO, it focuses on the downtime and establishes the maximum allowable time to restore the system and services after a disruption. In conclusion, your RPO and the RTO, they are the vital components of a disaster recovery planning and enabling the organization to set a clear objective for data protection and business continuity. So this is all we have to discuss today. See you next time with more exciting interview questions and trendy topics. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you.